Hi everybody! For many years I've been using these uh, stick-on 3D eyes for my lures and it's been working quite fine for me. But lately most of my eyes have a, a clear socket for the eye and uh, I want to have a kind of an angry eye look to it so I have to cut off a bit of the eye each time. So I thought to myself why not just start making my own lure eyes. It actually is quite simple and if you watch this movie you can see how it's done. The hardest part of making your own lure eyes is to get some cool designs to make them from. This movie offers you a few options in that area. If you are familiar with the paint shop program, you can download the template for the eyes from the text below and just go ahead and use that to create your own designs. If you're not that good with a paint shop program or a drawing program in the computer, you can just download my designs from down there print them and go ahead and make your own eyes from that. Or if you want to make your completely own eyes, well, you can use this movie as an inspiration to get going. I will start out by going into my computer inside and show you how I use the template to make a cool eye design. I'm now sitting here by my computer and has opened up my paint shop program, which in my case is a color paint. Uh, I think you can use uh, many other programs as well, but that is just my favorite here. And as you can see, I've uh, opened up my template here and uh, I will start now working on it. Um, the first thing I'll do is I'll make uh, three duplicate copies of it in three different layers. So I'll just do it like that. Okay, the first layer, I will just uh, paint everything outside the eyes white. Um, by using like that. Okay, and that's all for that. I'll just uh, hide that one for now. The, the first one, the, the one that it has the, the lowest location, the, the furthest back, um, I would, um, that is the one I'm going to paint on, and the other one is to be used as guides, as you will be seeing later. First of all, I'll choose one eye, which is the one that I'm going to use uh, the most, but um, the effects I will do here, I can transfer through the other eyes along the way. Okay, so here I have my, um, my primary eye, this one I've chosen, and uh, now I'll uh, start to add some colors, and I want it to look more like, like an aiming target, or whatever you call it, um, so I'll start by um, painting it in uh, three colors here. And the first color will be the color on the uh, outside. And I think that one should be reddish, sort of, maybe more orangey. Let's just make it orange. And uh, I'll use my brush here and I'll set the size of the brush to uh, 300 I think which will be a big dot here like that and I'll try to center it along the pupil here and um, I need the eye to completely disappear here okay and this is where the, the one of the other layers come in handy because I'll be painting on that one but I'll actually be able to put up the the other layer on top of it to see what I'm doing here. Uh, okay, and uh, next one will next uh, part or uh, color will be the yellow one, and I will do that uh, smaller. I think uh, 180 maybe. So I'll once again using the pupil as a center, and I want the the edge of the color to follow the edge of the eye here. So something like this, still a bit of orangey there, but that's fine. Okay, and then for the last color, I'll use the white one. And here I'll stop at 120, I think. No, less than that. 100, like this. And I'll just paint under the pupil here leaving as little outside as possible, something like that. And I'll just remove one layer here, 
So you can see now I have three colors in my in my background here. Okay. And then all you have to do is to grab the smear tool. In this case, it looks like this. I have set the, the size of it to eight. And what I want to do is I want to make some some stripes or streaks out here from the center and out like that. They should uh, have the pupil center as the center of the Okay, and I'll just make a lot and I'll even make some here up in the top, which I'm not going to use for this one, but I'll just show you later why. Um, they don't all need to be the same length or anything. Okay, and um, that was that. Then I go from the outside and in, and I don't want to go all the way into the white here, so I'll just and uh, try to hit it between the the stripes here. I'm not very good at that right now. Okay, and already now, if I add the, the third layer, which makes everything outside white, you can see a very, well, I think very nice eye looking uh, coloration, coloration here. Before I go ahead and make the, the last changes here, I just want to duplicate those to, to another eye as well. So I'll just uh, hide those two again. Being here, I'll just uh, grab my marking tool here, rectangle mask, and I'll just take as much as I need, maybe like this, and I'll copy that, and I can use that maybe for this eye up here. Position it using the extra layer here to position it. And now the I just have to move it down a bit. So now I can position that eye to match the, the other one here. And I can do it again. Add a new one, taking this one down here. And uh, Position that one. And then I could go on with all the eyes. Okay. Now that I have uh, one ready here, I'll just uh, add a little more effects. I would like the outside to be a little darker and uh, the, the area just around the pupil to be a little more white, especially out here where the, the, sen the, the circular pattern don't actually get it out here, so I'll just uh, grab my brush here, take the white color, I've set the transparency to 30, and I'll just use a little bit of that to add a little extra white here around the, the pupil. Then also I'll grab the orange and um, just add a little bit extra darkness here on the eye side, which matches the shape of the eye. Something like that. I could maybe a bit more up here. Or I could even make a use a even darker orange. I'll just grab a maybe maybe brownish color here. Something like that. I think that looks quite cool. I've now finished up uh, these two eyes, which is the ones that I'm going to use right now, so I can uh, leave the others for, for another day. And uh, I just want to turn them into a printable image. So um, first of all, I need to, to flatten the image, so to say, so I'll just take all the, the layers here and combine them into one, like this. So now I have one everything in one layer. And uh, then I grab my rectangular mask here and uh, just grab the area with the two images in, like this. Copy those. Then I'll grab my 
make a new image from those like that. So now I have an image with the, the two eyes I want to make in the correct size. So now I'll just uh, start by making the, the paper a bit larger. And as uh, photo paper here in Denmark comes in 100 by 150 millimeters, I'll use that because that will make it easier. Okay, like that. And then I'll grab my masking tool here and uh, mask in my two eyes here. I will copy those so I can make a right version of them. I will flip the image and I need to select the image to be able to do that like that horizontally. So now I have some right eyes here and in the clipboard I have the left so I can just paste those in. So now I have both right and left eyes. Then I'll just combine the two layers like that. So now I have them in the same layer and I can select both of them at the same time and copy that, zoom out a bit, paste them in and start adding as many eyes as I want to my paper. Okay, now I have a nice printable sheet that I can make some eyes from, so I'll just uh, print it out and return to the shed. Once you have your eye design in place, it's just a question of getting it out on some paper. For this purpose I use photo paper, but you could use some uh, sticker paper as well if you want to have an adhesive background. Or you could use some holographic paper if you want to have an extra shine. As long as you remember in your eye design to have some areas that is unpainted or is white, as uh, those will be uh, transparent from the uh, background, they'll be transparent through that. Okay? I've printed out a few uh, sheets here, and as you can see, I filled the paper to get the most of that. Also, I printed them out in some different sizes. Uh, you can do that either by resizing them in your paint shop, or you can resize them on the printer, uh, zoom in and out. Okay? So now I just need to cut out uh, a lot of eyes to make the, the eyes run. And to do that, I'll just grab a scissor and start cutting. I've now cut out a bunch of eyes here, and you might notice that I don't have any of the ones I just uh, made on my computer. But unfortunately my, uh, my printer ran out of ink and uh, I was unable to print them. But uh, these will do fine. Okay, so now I'm uh, ready to actually go ahead and make the lures, uh, the eyes. And um, this is actually more or less the only tool you need. It's a piece of board with a lot of screws in it. And uh, I will use this to put the eyes on and the reason is that they need to be elevated from the paper uh, to ensure that the, the epoxy you pour on won't uh, uh, just run out to the paper, okay? So um, you have a, a little board like this with the screws on it which you can uh, use for that purpose and um, to get them to stay there I use uh, some spray glue, spray mount in this case uh, this is the kind that does not harden, so uh, you will be able to peel off the, the eyes afterwards. And I'll just uh, give my, my, uh, my screws here a, a generous layer and uh, stick on the eyes. And then I just put on the eyes, making sure that I have sets of them. So uh, I can maybe sort them a bit. Okay, and now I have uh, filled the board with eyes, so I'm ready to actually go ahead and mix up some uh, epoxy to, uh, to make the eye. Always when you work with epoxy you should wear some gloves and also maybe a mask or work in a fume cabinet like I do, but today I will just wear the gloves to be able to speak while I work. Um, I will just... Um, mix up uh, some of the epoxy. This is glass cast which I always use and um, I'll do that out here. Normally uh, I wouldn't uh, mix up like this. I would uh, 
make ice when I coat my lures anyway, there's always some epoxy left over and if I have my ice ready on the board, I can just uh, use the leftover epoxy to create some ice for the next batch of lures. Okay, I have a little cup ready for mixing, I have a little stirrer and I have a, a straight one which I will be used to transfer the epoxy to the ice. So, well, let's just get going and I'll probably make up way too much here, but um, well, I can live with that. When you mix up the, the epoxy, you would like it to be as clear as possible. And one thing that helps is heating up the, the epoxy a little bit. That will make it more or lightly fluent and the, the small bubbles will easily come to the surface. So I just use a, a heat gun to, uh, to try to heat up it a little bit. Just uh, lukewarm. Mix it in. You can feel it in the hand, the temperature. I don't think it's visible, but it really is a much lighter fluidly and uh, that will help the bubbles come to the surface. It's like uh, the same temperature as my hand or maybe a little warmer. Um, if you have many bubbles in it, you could uh, leave it a little while to, uh, to surface. I don't think it's uh, too bad with this mix. Hard to see. There is a few small bubbles. I don't mind. Okay, then I grab my, my little thin stir here. And I'll just uh, start applying to the eyes. And uh, when you do that, you just pick up some epoxy and just gently put it on the eye, making sure to go all the way to the, the side of the, the eye here. And you can have quite a bit there. So all the way to the edge. And you can put on quite much. Uh, the thing is that the surface tension of the, the epoxy will make sure that you get a nice even uh, uh, bend. So it, it, uh, it will stay quite fine and it will be thinnest uh, at the sides. Just like you want it uh, and you know it from the, the stick on uh, 3D eyes. If you want really thick eyes, you might consider putting on more than one layer. So giving it two layers, but uh, I don't think that that is necessary for me. So I'll just... Uh, Leave it at that and then just go on from eye to eye, adding the epoxy. So simple. All the eyes have now had a layer of epoxy and uh, I can see there's a some tiny little bubbles in them that I just want to pop. And to do that you can use a, a normal uh, gas lighter and just uh, just give them a, a tiny little blast, that'll be enough for the, for the bubble to, to blast. And uh, if there's still some left, wait 10 minutes and do it again. I think uh, that should pop most bubbles if there is any. Okay, now I'll just leave them to dry and we'll have a look at them in the morning. The lure eyes have now had a few days to harden and are completely ready to use. Uh, here I have uh, some lures which are ready to get some uh, eyes mounted on them. So I'll just uh, grab a pair of gloves because I don't want to touch the baits uh, with my bare hands. And then I will glue on these eyes just using some 5 minute epoxy. Okay.
Okay, that was the first side, and I'll just leave those for a few minutes uh, to uh, for the glue to harden before I turn them over and uh, and glue them on the other side just to make sure that I don't um, <clears throat> get them um, moved around uh, while doing the other side. Okay, the lure eyes have now been glued onto some uh, jerk baits here, and uh, I'll just give them a few layers of epoxy, and then we'll see the result in the end. The lures I mounted with my 3D eyes are now finished, and here you see the result. I must say that I'm super satisfied with the outcome. I think the lures look uh, very nice, and I'll surely be using these eyes for my lures in the future. One thing I noticed uh, during the process of this movie is that this time I bought some fairly cheap uh, photo paper, and it seems that the paper itself soaks up some of the epoxy, and actually the, the, the white color grows a little more grayish, which of course isn't optimal. So I have to figure it out uh, a better photo paper if I want to use photo paper for this. Another thing I uh, I'm going to test is that I actually went ahead and bought some sticker paper to print on, and also some holographic sticker paper uh, to test out. I think that would be cool to get the, to see the results on those two papers, but that will be another time. Another thing I tested is, I tested out how much uh, epoxy I could actually put on the lure, and uh, even though I didn't reach the, any limit, uh, I, I easily got them up to about 2.5 mm thick, which is uh, compared to the 2 mm I normally get from the, the eyes I, I buy online, is, uh, is very good. I could probably go even much uh, fatter, but I don't need that for my lures, so, so this is quite fine. Before I finish, I just want to remind you all that in the text below the movie, you'll find uh, links for my, my eye designs here, so you can download them, print them, and make your own eyes. You'll also find the template if you want to make your com completely own design. And of course, uh, if you want to, you're always welcome to, to send me your designs, and I'll uh, include them in the text below for other people to benefit from. Okay? Well, that's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed the movie, and I hope you see me soon.